G'day, it's Bill here from Sidereal Trading. Today we've got an updated product from Pegasus, it's their Focus Cube. This one is version three. Now we've been with Pegasus products for several years now, and I've got the older brother, that's this one, on my own refractor. Um, I really love it, it just works. The Focus Cube and its Unity software communicates with my imaging software, um, I use Voyager, but you can use anything, to the point where I just don't even realize it's there, and that's kind of the point. So the new version is out, here it is. Let's have a look at what's the same and what's different. Okay, so here it is. It looks similar to its older brother, as you expect. Um, the most trivial difference is the color. Most of the box is black, but only the front plate is Pegasus blue. Um, like the previous version, the motor box has a built-in controller. So you'll see a USB port, uh, that's there actually, uh, rather than a serial connection. If you've got a separate controller, like a Powerbox Ultimate, you won't need this version. You can get away with the Pegasus Focus Motor Kit, although I'm very happy with the controller in this box. There are three connections. The power and the comms all come through the USB-C cable, which will save you a power cable, which is in turn great for cable management. The sensor connects in the middle, that's that little DIN plug, and the hand controller, if you want one, connects uh, using this RJ port. I'll connect the USB up in a moment. A bit about the motor itself, it can lift six kilos, which is close to what its predecessor was capable of with an external 12 volt power supply. Of course, that doesn't guarantee you a Crayford warrant ca uh, can carry that weight, remember. The box itself is a smidge smaller than the old version. Uh, you can see them next to each other. Um, that might be very important if you've got a limited amount of space around your focus knob, like if you've got a long dovetail there to balance a small refractor and a camera or something. Now, the new universal version of the focus cube just which comes with one size bracket. Uh, the previous one started with one, then they brought out a narrower one because some people weren't able to get the wide bracket on their focuser. Uh, this one is close in size to the narrow one, so I guess that's going to do for all the focuses. The sensor, this one, it's a slightly different sensor to the previous version. It doesn't make any difference, it's simply plug and play. You can't use the old sensor with the new focus cube, but you get one in the box, so that's fine. Um, the couplers, there are five couplers, which give you the ability to connect the FC3 with all manner of spindle sizes on the focuses. Um, bolts, yeah, you get a packet of bolts to attach the bottom bracket to your focuser, there's nothing new there. Um, sticker, there's a sticker. Um, I'm not sure if automation for a longer night's sleep is their new slogan, but it's actually pretty apt. Um, when I was younger, I would have said sleep is for wusses, but not these days. Whenever I'm imaging, I take every opportunity to have a nap, and autofocus is probably the thing that's helped me the most there, because I can just tell my imaging software to do a focus run every hour or so. So let's have a look at how the FC3 works. Now, there are a number of different ways of setting it up, but I'll start with the heavy end uh, through a computer. If you're an imager like me, you'll mostly be using the focus through the same computer that's controlling your camera. So you'll be running Pegasus Astro's Unity software, which we have on this computer here. The focuser, as you can see, isn't connected at the moment, so I'll just do that. I've got a USB-C cable here, stick that in there, pop that in there. See if I can get it. Oh, it has to go back on its spot so this camera can see it. It takes a few seconds, as you can see, uh, and here's the, here's the focuser screen. You can move the focuser uh, with the computer. Let's see if I move it back to zero, clocking like that. You'll see that the focuser is moving. It's like having a hand controller. Uh, but Unity is also an ASCOM aware program. So you'll see a focuser in the ASCOM chooser in your imaging software called Focus Cube 3 or something like that. You can connect to that as, as normal. Uh, from here, your computer entirely controls the focuser. I'm not going to go into that any more. Your, uh, you automated images know what you're doing. Oh, incidentally, I can take this opportunity to show you the temperature sensor working. If I connect it, uh, just go back to there, pop that in there. All right. It takes a few seconds, and I'll have to scroll down before we can see much going on. Here's the temperature, and it's going to take a little while. To, there it goes. It's now 25.5 degrees in this office. It's fairly warm. So um, 
That's the way the, uh, the, the temperature sensor works. Next, you can control the focus group through your, uh, cube through your smartphone. Now, mine's an iPhone. Um, now, the focus cube version 3 sets up a Wi-Fi access point so you can connect it to your phone. Uh, and to do this, putting my glasses back on, you go to settings, uh, go back to Wi-Fi, you go turn it on, there you go, and it will sh set up a, there it is, focus cube. Okay, it's connected to that. In a sec, there we go. Now we can go back to, uh, let's see, you can see all, my, all the stuff on my phone now. Okay, you go focus cube. 3.local, it will ask you for a username, which is admin, and the password is 12345678. Obviously, you can change that. And now, here's the focuser, and just go to focus, and I can change that, and there you go, you can see the focuser is moving. Okay, that's pretty simple. If you've got a five volt battery like I've got here, that's just a plain old phone extension battery, um, that means you can use the focus cube for visual remote focusing, which is great. Not having to touch a high magnification telescope to focusing is a big plus. Finally, there's a hand controller. That's this guy uh, you can get. It's a separate purchase. It doesn't come with the focus cube. Uh, this is really simple and reliable. The hand controller gets its power from the focus cube and this one, in I haven't changed it, this is still getting uh, uh, power from the battery. So just stick that in there. Go around there so you can see it, okay. Oop, cables all over the place. Now, um, you can move in two speeds, in and out. If you've got the back, backlash compensation set up in Unity or in here, uh, it follows that too. You can see the step number uh, right here on the display. Actually, probably from there. Right. So one thing about the hand controller, you do need a new one, the Easy Focus, rather than the old version without the screen. Now, if I just twist this, you'll see that it's moving. I don't know if you can see that. It's moving the focuser using that. Right. I think I'd actually prefer using the hand controller uh, from the phone for visual work. Um, the phone connection disconnects if you walk away, and I think it also disconnects after a certain time of inactivity. As well as this, there's some kind of Wi-Fi interference at my Dark Sky site, which has really bugged me in the past, and I've become a real cable junkie. They're just more reliable. So that's it in a nutshell. There are other details as well. I haven't shown all the ways that the Focus Cube can connect to your equipment, but I don't want to get too far into the weeds at this point. I love Pegasus Astro equipment. It's got a nice feel to it, and I've found it to be very reliable to the point where I can just forget it's even there. It does all the things its predecessor does. The new feature of the Wi-Fi will be great for some people. I think for me, though, saving the cable with the power coming through the USB is the best thing. That's about it. Um, I'm Bill from Sidereal Trading, and we'll see you next time.